here. Uh, yes. I'll start the recording going. I'll uh, I'll share the screen. Yes. And uh, here we here we go. Okay. So okay. you know, all right. So everybody see my screen. Is is this okay? Then um, oh, and Al, hi. Um, so anyhow, welcome to the Five Powers of the Resilient Mind. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. And um, many of you know me, uh, and I, I should say uh, just a, a little bit about my background. Um, I've been in education with academic business advisors for just over 20 years. I've been advising mostly publishers on instructional design and systems design and, and how to design their products to be able to reach more students. Um, I kind of backed in a few years ago to being the U.S. COO of a Finnish uh, augmented reality company um, called 3D Bear. Um, but um, <laughs> what's really amazing to me, so, so this has been seven years. Seven years ago, I got a chance to go to Niger and teach university students uh, what I called sense making at the time, which was you know, how the brain makes sense of situations, um, how sometimes your own brain holds you back from being successful, um, how to recognize when that happens, uh, what to do about it so that you can become resourceful and resilient, and then um, and then how to work with others and help them become resourceful and resilient at, at the same time. So as I said, that was seven years ago. Uh, I, there were about 60, 65 I'll call them kids, but they were young adults. Um, in in the the in each of the classes, I taught I taught two classes, and two of the people who were in the class are actually here. So uh, Musa is is here, and Rashid is here, and they were in the very first class of sense making and mind shifting that that I taught, and um, and we we've, we've stayed in touch, and I've been trying, and we will succeed in getting both of you. Uh, to be able to visit in the United States because um, you know it's 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 been a a, a long journey, but um, that's what we're 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 going to be talking about today is some of the aspects of mind shifting. Um, right now, what I teach is I teach three different classes in mind shifting. Each class is six two hour sessions. So what we're doing today is one small piece of one of the classes and it's about the the five powers of the resilient mind and i thought you know it's, it, that it would be um important before we talk about the resilient mind itself to to, to look at the contrast so um so to understand you know how we are when we're not resilient Okay, when 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 we're not resilient, we are generally judging things. We're seeing things as good or bad. It's binary, the two choices. When we when we're in binary mode with people, the the the, pe the people that we're trying to deal with are either with us or they're against us. And when this happens, we're generally feeling threatened or triggered. And when that happens, our brains release cortisol and adrenaline and restricts the types of things that we can do. Our first responses are the fight, flight, and freeze responses. Uh, and I'm sure that all of you are familiar with fight, flight, and freeze. And then two other responses are things that we're already familiar with that we can do without having to think. Those are habits. And things that we can copy that everybody else is doing where, where we can feel part of a group. And that's copying or mimicking what our, what our peers are doing. When we're in that frame of mind, we're not able to absorb information that may be feeding back to us, showing us that what we're doing is not working. What our brains are doing is they're looking for confirmation that what, it, that what we're doing is working, and they're disregarding any information that conflicts with that. And what we're also doing is we're looking for others that agree with what we're doing is right, is right and those become like members of our tribe or members of our group and people who are disagreeing with us become people who we go into this fight flight or freeze habit with uh and um and you know we, we fight against them or, or we run away from them and you know these these then 
a result of what we're feeling and our mindset, at the, you know, as, as we're not resilient. And if you kind of look at, you know, negative mindsets or negative ways of feeling, you probably can, you, you, you can get lists of all these different types of, you know, negative emotions. This one happens to come from Harvard business, business review. And, you know, you know, each of the items on the first five columns is a negative emotion and negative emotions are the result of us judging that something is bad. It's a result of this binary, good, bad mindset. And if you look at it also, you see that in, the, in this example that Harvard Business Review uh, put out, there's five columns of negative emotions and one column of positive emotions. And that kind of balances out with what our brain really does. And that's why we're not resourceful so much of the time. What we want to get to do, and what you're going to be learning a couple tools tonight to be able to do, is to go from these feelings on the, you know, on the left to a mindset where we can be resilient and resourceful. And we're going to be doing that tonight with five powers uh, that we exercise when we're being resourceful. Now, this um, this section of the course, it actually came from originally a book that I read called Positive Intelligence by somebody named Shirzad Shamin. He's the one who came up with the idea of these five powers. Um, and then what I did after reading uh, after reading the book is I actually took three years of coaching in positive intelligence. And what you're going to be getting tonight is um, my interpretation based on that three years of coaching and based on the, the book by um, Shirzad Shami. Um, and that's going to, you're going to find that if you end up taking one of the courses that, that I teach, um, you're going to find also virtually nothing in the courses are things that I come up with on my own. They're things that I have pulled out of um coaching or psychology or neuroscience or cognitive science or economics or military strategy. I've tried to, to pull together things from many different sources uh, to consolidate them into one body of the different things that, um, that work to make us, uh, make us resilient. So these five powers, and we'll go into each one individually, you know, empathy, which is compassion or connecting with others or compassion for ourselves, you know, exploration, um, which is uh, looking at information, looking at what's happening from a sense of curiosity or a sense of wonder, uh, innovation, which isn't just coming up with something to do, but even more so is collaborating with others to create and work through potential things that we could be doing. Navigation, which is what Shirzad um, calls focusing on what's really important and being grounded and letting everything that isn't important just pass and be. And focused action, which is not just coming up with what we're going to be acting with, acting on or doing, but also understanding that as we're doing, there's going to be obstacles. Some of those obstacles are external. And a lot of those obstacles are internal. Our own mind is, is presenting obstacles to us. And how do we how do we act even knowing that there's going to be internal and external obstacles and still accomplish our goals? Now, I, as I was talking about these five different things, you know, I was, I was talking about the different things that we're doing, but these five powers are all about being. They're not really, they're not about doing. So it's not just a matter of saying, oh, I'm going to say some empathetic things to people, or I'm, I'm not going to yell at myself. Um, it's about feeling I am empathy or I am exploration. So before I go into, um, I guess, and, and, and dive into each one of these, uh, I thought I'd just open up the floor. Is, is, based on what I've covered so far, are there thoughts that people have? Just feel free to unmute yourself. And, and what are your thoughts as you, as you think about either what we showed before, which is the you know, when we're not resilient or, or judgment preventing resilience or these five powers. Aha. So it's going to be, it's going to be work to get, to get you guys to talk, huh? but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to move on. Um, and let's, let's, let's go into the first power then. 
Okay. So the first, the first power that, that we're going to go through is the power of empathy and empathy really falls into two different paths that you can, you can have compassion or empathy for yourself and you can compa have compassion or empathy for other people. And it's a process of seeking to understand what other people are going through, seeking to kind of walk through their shoes and doing that from a feeling of curiosity, not a feeling of judgment. Uh, and, and, you know, you can think of some examples of empathy. You know, first of all, you're with somebody and that person just succeeded. Okay. Um, being resilient and resourceful, uh, would mean that we're genuinely happy, you know, and we express our happiness at, at what they succeeded being, um, non-resourceful or non-resilient or in our, um, lizard brains, uh, we might be jealous, which would, which would take us out of empathy or in terms of compassion for ourselves, you know, we succeed in something. Okay. How many times do we succeed in something? And then we think, oh, we didn't really deserve that. Compassion for ourselves is when we can, we succeed in something and we feel good and we celebrate it. We give ourselves a pat on the back because of what we accomplished. And that's on, you know, one side is when things are going right, showing empathy. It's a little bit harder when things are not going right. So when something, when we're trying to do something and something doesn't work out, very often we blame ourselves. That locks us into that um, that lizard mind where we're not resilient. Whereas if something doesn't work out and we have compassion for ourselves and we say, you know, I'm going to be empathetic, okay? We accept ourselves, you know, hey, something happened yeah, um, and I'm going to learn from it. Or something happens and we blame somebody else because something happened. You know, why does this person always do this? Or you messed up, this is your fault. Once we're in that frame of mind where we're blaming others, we're in that uh, survival brain and we're not resilient or resourceful. But when we're curious, okay, something didn't work out, somebody was involved in it and, and we feel curious about how they may be feeling or what led to it that's that puts us into empathy and then we can be more resourceful and resilient um and then the third thing is is we could be blaming the circumstances all oh, these these bad, bad things always happen to me um there's nothing that i can do that the train was late um and being resourceful or resilient it's like okay this happened and this gave me an opportunity to learn something. This gave me an opportunity to practice something. Um, and I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be doing, you know, I'm going to be learning so that I, so this doesn't happen again. So one of the, you know, it's, it's, again, it's not a matter. It, empathy is not a matter of what you're doing. It's a matter of how you're feeling and who you're being as it happens. You know, one example is, let's say your spouse asks you to take out the garbage and you, you know, your reaction could be, darn, you know, like I was, I just sat down or I'm doing the dishes or whatever. And now they're asking me to take out the garbage. And so that's, you know, that's a, a, a kind of survival mind ap approach. Or it could be, you know, um, spouse has to take out the garbage and it's like, well, the garbage needed to be taken out. I happen to be close to the garbage and I'm going to take it out. Probably in either way, you're taking out the garbage. But you have a choice of, of in your reaction or catching your reaction and saying, you know something, I'm going to be empathetic in this situation. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, um, they need me to take out the garbage and I'll take out the garbage. And it's, it ends up that you're in a happier frame of mind and you're more resourceful and resilient. A really good example came out from somebody who was a student in, in one of the courses, you know, and, um, and this person said, it can be very difficult at times to empathize with my middle school kiddo at home because of how emotional and irrational he can become. Many of his problems seem so small to me that it's easy to overlook how big of an emotional response they can evoke from him. I declared this week that I would tap into my empathy powder, power when we interacted. It's been very eye-opening being more mindful and empathetic of his feelings so I can respond to him more appropriately. So it's so a way of becoming more resourceful and resilient is to declare 
yourself that you are going to be, you're going to be empathy. So I have a question. Okay. If we're trying to sell somebody something, or we're trying to influence, how would, how would it differ if we just being in empathy or not being in empathy with that other person? This time somebody has to respond. All right, Mitch. Okay. Um, say that Thank you. uh, if you're in empathy with somebody that you're trying to relate to or sell to, it's going to be easier for you to make a connection with them and more likely that you get the sale. And what else? Uh, and you'll have a better relationship with them. So it could result in future sales future sales future future anything right future having fun future brainstorming you know, they could you know if you're in it if you've been em empathy with them you're in a mutual connection so you're you know you basically at that point you're trying to help each other right mm -hmm. and so it becomes you know it becomes a much more pleasant situation and actually you know you may get the sale you may got, not get the sale but you'll get somebody who basically has has your back empathy you know people take a look at this oh you know empathy that just means you're you're going to be always giving in empathy does not mean that you're giving in i think you know one of my um favorite authors is is a woman named uh, becky kennedy who uh, wrote a book called Good Inside. And, you know, she gave an example of like of children, okay, that you have, um, you have a child and it's that child's bedtime. It The fact is, it's that child's bedtime and so that child has to go to, has to go to bed. Being in empathy doesn't mean that you have to say to the child, okay, you know, I understand you're upset, so, so you don't have to go to bed now. You know, empathy could mean like, you just understand that that child is upset because they were doing something that they like to do. They do not feel like going to sleep. And so you can empathize with them, but you can still, you know, you, you can still lay down what has to happen from a point of view of empathy rather than a point of view of, um, you know, fight or fight and flight. Uh, so, you know, she says, you know, you, you can be both, you can be both empathetic and hold the line and um you know and to me that 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 was very very powerful okay uh the second power is explore or exploration you know i think of exploration as kind of imagining a, a child walking along the this, this seashore walking along the beach you know just turning over rocks just because they want to see what's under them Okay, they're doing that from curiosity, from a sense of wonder. They're not. There's no blame. There's no judgment. Uh, what Shirzad Shamin, uh, you know, uses it as, as metaphor for exploration, is the fascinated anthropologist or the fascinated researcher. So, an anthropologist being somebody who looks at human behavior, uh, and um, and is trying to just figure out what are the causes what are the you know what's what's happening what took place why is why is this person acting that way and the anthropologist is doing this from uh from a standpoint of curiosity not from a standpoint of judging that this this type of action is wrong this type of action uh, is right while you're exploring you're not planning how you can get information that bolsters what you already think that you should do okay um while you're exploring who you are is somebody who's curious nothing more you're just exploring what's happening what's taking place so that you can get more information this guy's amazing this is so uh you know you're looking at causes you're looking at possible possible outcomes not to blame not to achieve specific results but just for the knowledge um and again, it's it's not the words or actions that mean whether you're in explore mode. It's the feeling behind the words or actions. So you have the 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 question, you know, why didn't you do your homework? Well, that can be either from explore or that could be from judgment. 
if it's from Explorer, you're just interested in finding out why the person didn't do their homework. And maybe you can discuss it. And maybe you can come up with some, you know, some reason or some way that that, that won't happen again. From a, from a point of judgment, it's like um, the fact that they didn't do their homework. I'm judging you. And that's most likely going to result in a in a fight rather than uh, working together. Uh, and when you're curious and when you're in wonder, that's when you're in resilience. So you could just you again, you declare yourself, I, you know, for this interaction, I'm going to be in exploration for this problem. I'm going to be I'm going to be in explore mode and I'm just looking for information. Now, these powers um, very often combine. So it's so it's not necessarily true that you're just you're just going to be in explore mode or you're just going to be in empathy mode because you can start off being in explore mode and then that can result in empathy. And you look, look at the similarities between them in both explore and, and empathy. There's no blame or judgment. You're proceeding from a sense of curiosity or a mindset of wonder. Um, you're, you, you may be a fascinated anthropologist or researcher where you're looking at, you know, what's happening, what took place, or from a st standpoint of, of, um, of empathy, you know, you're trying to create a connection between you and another person and you're exploring, you know, how that takes place. So questioning from uh, the exploration mode often creates a connection and that you can build on knowing the backstory um, can also build empathy. And there's a there's another great example from um, somebody who took one of the one of the courses also, and what she wrote during a reflection exercises was you know there's this one girl, she sometimes doesn't come into the class, she rarely completes her hands in her homework, she's quite smart, but loves to make the rules. No matter what I did, I couldn't reach her, and her actions and lack of response were triggering stories about her being a bad kid, about her not trying, about her not being worth the effort to help, okay? So this person is starting off with, you know, judgmental, okay, using the survival mind. And then she writes, I decided to model the exploration and empathy powers. From there, I went and sat next to her in the hall at the high top counter she often sits at during class time. I, I watched her watch reels for a minute, and then I asked about what kind of reels she likes most. She said cooking, and then I explored the responses. It, it took me by surprise, and I guess my comment that I like watching cooking show that I like watching cooking shows surprised her as well. She shared with me a bit of the dynamics at home. Her family was sick, and she was in charge of cooking dinner. Again, this is middle school, right? She wanted to make sure it was healthy, full of veggies. She shared she was she has a little sister that she takes care of. There's no mom. It's just dad and the grandparents. She has assumed the mom role in the household, cooking, cleaning, etc. I was able to make some connections. I asked what it was like to be mom at home and then come to school and be treated as a child and whether that was why she didn't do what her teachers told her to do. When I expressed this to her, she looked at me with glossy eyes and nodded, yes, I had such empathy for her in that moment. She told me she's super smart and can do a lot of the stuff we ask her to do. And I told her I knew that. And the reason I have harassed her is to, to, to try harder is because I see the potential in her and I want her to show it off, to get the grades, to earn the diploma, to land a good job and to be a successful human. I really feel we're going to make real progress this year. What a difference having a having a conversation as a curious individual rather than through judgment. Anybody have any um, comments as as you listen to her story? I know some of you are in education, so you can probably see yourself in that also. That you know you see a kid. Um, and you may start off with judgment, but you can declare, uh, or you see a family member, or you see a coworker with you know, and start to judge them. But you can declare, you know, something. I'm just going to be using explore and empathy, and you can get into a more resilient mode. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mitch, I believe uh, the reason this happened is because uh, 
it's actually easier, you know, to judge than trying to explore actually. So people, right. you know, tend, you know, uh, to judge because it's just easy to do, right? Right, because we no longer have to think anymore. This person yeah. is bad. We no longer have to work hard at them, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and that's really why, you know, wh why our minds have operated that way because it makes it a lot less work for our brain and our brains already consume about 20% of, uh, you know, of, of our energy. You know, we, they're trying to cut back on the amount of work they Great, great comment. Thank you. So a real test of explore and empathy is can you use those two powers, explore and empathy, with someone you disagree with? And if you look at society, you know, we have no shortage of severe disagreements in society, right? And we seem to always devolve into these arguments, okay? Um, and and as um, Rashid brought up, you know, what happens, uh, you know, it's so, it's so easy to get into argumentative mode because we get this quick shot of dopamine that then encourages us to uh, do something that we've done before. And so we're, we kind of feel like, okay, we're making progress because we're arguing with this person. But we never resolve the argument. So we end up feeling worse than when we started. We have, you know, it actually long term increases our anger and increases our hopelessness. So the question is, you know, could you go, could you declare yourself to be in explorer empathy mode with a person who disagrees with you about gun control? or disagrees with you about abortion, or gets disagrees with you about immigration, climate change, sustainability, education, or Medicare and healthcare. You know, how would that look? Uh, can anybody, um, uh, you know, like, how do you think, what do you think the world would be like if we could have discussions with people who disagreed with us so that we could be in exploring and empathizing rather than fighting or knocking heads and i see actually so i haven't um oops sorry I, I uh i guess that there's things in the chat and i'm sorry um i have not been looking at the, that the chat um so let's see uh so you know saying i'm actually uh so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to regard the chat as you all talking to each other, um, because I can't look at the chat and talk and, and look at the slides mm -hmm. all at the same time. But if somebody has something that you want to say, please, you know, feel free to please un, un, unmute. And um, Mitch, and can I'll, you? Yes. It's Kim. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, everyone. Hi. So this is really fascinating and really interesting, and I really appreciate you doing this because this, this is really neat. It needs to be heard. Um and you just struck a chord because oftentimes we are we are all trying to have these intelligent conversations with one another, especially when we're in conflict. Yep. And you know, coming from a place, I'm also you know I'm highly educated in certain areas of this stuff, but it doesn't mean that everyone else is. So there comes a point where, what happens, Mitch? I'll throw this out to you and everyone else when. We have a certain level of emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence, which is where this is bringing us all to, and that you're coming from a place of exploration and empathy, and you're trying to have that conversation with someone else who doesn't understand this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of sometimes can appear that you're being aloof or, you know, better than or higher than when the other person actually gets so agitated to the point where, oh, she thinks she's so much that or he thinks, she, you know, there's so much that because we understand this and perhaps we're speaking to someone who doesn't. How do we cross that barrier in that conversation where we're trying to resolve the very conflicts or just trying to have a conversation with other people? in an intelligent way how do we how do we how do we teach that other person or that those other people or groups of people in a quick way mm -hmm. to have the same level of conversation so it doesn't turn into an argumentative situation so that that is exactly what i want to happen and i don't you know like that i i have some ideas but you're at, you're a coach and I've always been impressed with the way you, you, what, what would be a suggestion that you have? 
I'm going to turn it right back to you. I mean, I don't really know. Um, it's hard, I, right? I toy with this, right? I mean, I. It's not. This isn't about me. I'm. I'm. I'm deferring to you. You're. Okay. You're the the expert in here. You know. Yeah. It, honestly, it's not about me. I'm. I'm actually throwing it out there to understand. Because yes, if someone goes through a coaching program, whether it's yours, mine, or anyone else's, yes, mm -hmm. then then we're all on the same playing field per se, and we can have these conversations and unravel a sticky situation. I'm talking about exactly what you're talking about, right. where you know how when we might have these tools and we're trying to talk to other people in this intelligent manner, not to get into a combative or con mm -hmm. you know an argumentative situation. How do we, okay, I'll put it this way. How do we break down the bricks? Because right. we have to sometimes just break one brick at a time when you're mm -hmm. having these conversations with people. How do we do that with finesse and grace? So, um, I, so I'm going to give like three or four different answers to that uh, because um, I, I never give a simple answer to anything. Uh, so one answer is, that that whole question is the basis of the third of the three courses that I teach. So I one of the courses is called Conflict to Collaboration. And that course, it's 12 hours of material. So so it's this is not something that you can just get necessarily in you know a five or 10 minute conversation. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one answer. But but another answer is um sometimes you're not going to be, you know, this, the other person is just going to be too angry, too confrontational. And sometimes you just, you know, at, from compassion and from empathy, you can say, you know, something, we're not making progress here. Maybe we just, let's just, we just have to disengage and you can be that person. So that's, a, that's another answer. And a third answer, not, none of these work all the time. But a third answer is um, we all have these mirror neurons and the mirror and these mirror neurons allow us to copy what other people, you know, we naturally copy what other people are doing. And um, the tendency is, is that if you're around a person who's angry, for most of us, our negative emotions are stronger than our, our positive emotions much of the time. We are around somebody who's angry. We're going to react in an angry fashion and we're going to mirror their anger and their confrontation. If we can declare that we're going to be in exploratory and curious mode, sometimes that by doing that over time, we can, their mirror neurons can trigger and they will also go into explore and curious mode. And to make that happen, sometimes it's helpful to make it into a game. It like, I'm with a person um, who is confrontational to me. We're talking about, um, abortion or we're talking about gun control and you know i can feel that that, that their temperature has has risen and we're going to have a, a, a you know if left to our own devices we're going to we're going to end up in a, in a fight but i can say to myself you know something i'm going to approach this from explore from curiosity and i'm going to try 10 things now if 10 things don't work then i'll back off and we'll we'll just part ways. But I'm going to try ten different times to come back with exploration and see if I can trigger that person's mirror neurons. And if it doesn't work in ten times, um, we part. And maybe I can evaluate different things that I said, and maybe the next time I'll I'll, I'll be better at it. But by by reacting in um, you know in connection with a person or trying to act in connection with a person. You know, I also believe that I will have made some impact on that person, even if I haven't gotten to the point where we can both discuss this and collaborate on it. Is that a fair answer? It was. Yes, hundred percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. No, and thank you because it's it's it. You know that gets into the crux of you know we have all these issues and we're not being resourceful and resilient. And so, how can we use these in order to be resourceful and resilient? Uh, brilliant, brilliant question. Thank you. All right, then. Um, 
the third of the of the powers is innovation is to say you know saying i am going to be an innovative person an innovative person doesn't necessarily mean that i'm the one who's coming up with ideas uh and we can all recall all these instances where we're in a meeting with other people and I, you know i have an idea and this other person has an idea and this other person has an idea and you know you start noticing that we're that we and everybody else is spending more time shooting down what everybody else is saying at, instead of instead of moving towards a solution so you know innovation is um you know is really a matter of pulling a group together to be able to come up with something that's better than any one of us could have come up with on their own and there's some games that we can play to make that happen okay we can uh come up with somebody who um we trust or we think is creative like um uh, let's just say uh gandhi okay and we said you know what might gandhi suggest in this situation or, or you know, you know, I just chose Gandhi, but it could be you know some other person, and and brainstorm around that to get out of the arguing mode. Uh, I like um, two is uh, number two are, are two different but very much related um, techniques: the yes and technique, and the what I like about that technique. Uh, very often, you know, we're waiting for the other person to suggest something, and then we say yes, but, and that but basically is telling the other person that everything that they said is negated and we're going to, we're going to suggest something else. It's prolonging the argument rather than um, rather than using what they said as a spur to go on to something greater. Yes. And is a technique where you, where the person says something you said, yes. And also, and you're adding to their technique and the, and another way of doing that exact same thing is, is the, what I like about that technique, the person talks and, in, and what you say is is you know something what i like about that technique is so and so and also i was thinking and then and then and then you add something else to that so those are you know those are two more ways of bringing a meeting back to being innovative and you being in, you being innovation yourself um talking about that you know you don't have you know instead of talking about well we're going to do this or we're going to do this to say you know something which are the things that we can try first to see if they work and so you're you're again you're you're becoming you're helping the group become more innovative um internally to imagine how the other person is 10 percent right most of the people that you're dealing with are reason you know ha have a certain amount of intelligence a certain amount of experience they can't be a hundred percent wrong if you really look for it you can find the 10 percent that they're right and you can use that in the conversation to build from that and develop your you know, your your joint priorities or on the flip side of that imagine you know something i've been saying this but how how could that be wrong and then having the conversation move towards how that could be wrong you know how that could be wrong which then encourages the group to think about gee how 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 could they be wrong and you can think about situations where that might happen. So let's say you're in a group that tasks, that's tasked with a project and that group hits an obstacle. Well, the survival mind way of handling that might be uh, somebody piping up and says, you know something, everybody just needs to do their job and they just have to work a little harder and we're going to work through that. And then uh, you can imagine how the argument go goes. Is, no, 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 no. We have to come up with new things. Okay. But the innovative way would be to take that example and add to it. So the per when the person says, you know, everybody just needs to do their job and work a little harder, you know, the next person could say, um, you know, why don't we, um, you know, that's one thing that we can do. Um, and let's put that down as one of the possible things. Let's come up with three or four other things that we could possibly do. Um, and and let's dis, dis, discuss those. And so, you know, changing the conversation to involve everybody. Or another situation might be, let's say, you know, a group of teachers, okay, getting together to, to discuss improving student achievement in science, uh, perhaps using new technology, perhaps using games to, to, to teach them science. And one person in the group comes up and says, you know something, you know, all these newfangled things, they never work. The existing textbooks have just, just fine. We should just stick with them. 
Okay. And again, that would be normally shutting down conversation or causing an argument because the natural reaction to that um, would be to say, no, 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 we should do this or we should do that or you're getting to an argument. But instead of arguing the person, the, the point, you know, the next person or you from an innovative standpoint might say, you know, that's ex that's you're you're really right, because what we need to do is we need to take what's working from the textbook and use that and. What else do you think we could do? And so open it up so that you're in a, you're in an innovative mode. So um, those are you know some thoughts about innovation, and then I want to go next to uh, to navigation. Okay, navigation, which is about choosing from different paths based on deeply held values, or what gives life meaning and purpose. You know, it's being explicit about what's truly important and not getting lost in the weeds. So if you say you're you're going to be navigation today or you're going to be navigation in this situation is to is this is to ask yourself, you know, something in this situation, what's really important or to ask yourself, you know, something if I if I were in um, uh, resourceful or resilient mode, if I were really feeling grounded and act and anchored, what would I really want in this situation or what would I love? Or I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, are familiar with the Pareto principle, which says that 80% of the things that we do or 80% of the things that happen are really unimportant. And only 20% of the things that happen are the things that really make a difference. And to ask ourselves, you know, this happened. I seem to be getting upset about this. But is this really in the 80% or is this in the 20%? You know, two years from now, am I going to say that this was something that was really important or two years from now, I'm going to say, you know, that was really meaningless and maybe just letting things go. Or um, another trick that we can do to get into navigation mode is to say, you know, something here, I, I, I'm having this situation, this problem right now. But if I were at the end of my life looking back, what would be really important about this situation? And that that also can focus our minds on on um, you know on the navigation power, or asking ourselves, you know, what would my wiser elder self say? Or one of my favorites is, we're in this situation now. I wonder what somebody a hundred years from now would have wanted me to do in this situation. And those are tricks that we can use to get ourselves in the navigation feeling, the navigation frame of mind, which puts us more into curiosity. Um, and uh, and gives us the ability to be more resilient and more resourceful. And to me, you know, navigation and innovation can also go hand in hand, just as exploration and empathy go hand in hand. You know, when you think about these these these, you know, what's really important, or um, or what else can we do, you know. Maybe ask yourself, you know, could you use navigation or innovation with someone who really disagrees with you? You know, could you use these two powers, um, to maybe together with exploration or empathy, you know, to find your common values and then explore possible actions that you both can agree with? And so that's that's another hope is that is that you find that you're able to, um, you know, to to do that with people who disagree with you. Um, you know, when, when, when you have an important project or when you're having a conversation, any thoughts about, about, you know, before we go, we go into the, the last of the five powers, any thoughts about these two? Hey, Mitch. Yep. Hey. Hey, I had a thought. I, I remember um, in college, I took a psychometric class and mm -hmm. professor uh, shared a study about how uh, people with high IQs generally see both sides of a debate or both sides of an opinion mm -hmm. and it's therefore hard for them to decide which side to take and so i think that um that's kind of a, a mental model that i've used is going into some things and saying all right i need to bring that mindset because there's always you know those two sides and then even sharing that with others and starting mm -hmm. a conversation. I've actually done this on a few LinkedIn posts where I've shared the study and, and said, often, I'm, you know, I'm about to share something that could be controversial. Um, often they're you know, high IQ people 
generally we'll be able to see both sides. And it's incredible the, the difference in comments that you'll get on LinkedIn when you just frame it that way, because I think it puts people in the right mindset and in that curious mindset. That's, that's, a, that's a great example. I, I, I love that. of just kind of preconditioning people to be curious before saying something. Uh, that's brilliant. Great idea. Uh, any other uh, other thoughts? Okay. Then the fifth of powers is focused action. Okay. And focus, focused action means, you know, staying in resilient mode, uh, maintaining that mode, um, even in the face of things going wrong. This is a sense of what um, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi called flow. And, and people who use games are, are, or, or um, people who do, um, I, I guess, uh, coaching are very, you know, are familiar with flow. It's that, you know, you lose track of time because you're so absorbed with what you're doing. And despite obstacles and despite the efforts of our, um, you know, our uh non-resilient parts of our mind to react to obstacles with fear or anxiety um yet this sense of flow is like always always moving forward so you know it's it's more than just coming up with what you're going to do it's how are you going to react when something doesn't go right and so you're, you're you 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 come up with the action and you're also asking yourself not from the standpoint of shooting this down but from the standpoint of stealing yourself to be successful, gee, you know, how am I going to react when something go doesn't go right? And how am I, you know, how um, how am I going to overcome when my, when my own mind tries to stop me? How am I going to maintain a sense of ease of, of flow? How am I going to con to be to continue to feel curiosity and a sense of play instead of fear and anxiety when inevitably things don't turn out exactly the way I expected them to do? So, you know, some of the things that I found are helpful uh, for myself is, um, you know, I might tell myself um, as I'm thinking about something, you know, when my reactive mind tells me to quit, how am I going to overcome that? And that's something that, that's, that's helped me many times. Or in advance, you know, what are a few of the things that could go wrong and how might I handle them when they go wrong? It's usually not those things that go wrong, but just the fact that I'm, I know that I'm um, prepared to handle things that go wrong, allow me to handle unexpected things when they happen. And then, um, and then also to steal myself with, you know, I know there's going to be times when I'm going to be feeling anxious. Okay. But that feeling of being anxious, that's part of trying something new. You know, how am I going to stay in resilient mode? even when I feel anxious and I can steal myself to, to overcome the, the uh, feeling of anxiety. Uh, so this is, you know, this is something we go into a lot in the uh, first of the mind shifting courses. Um, but any, any, um, actually I'm looking at the time and I just, rather than ask questions, I think I'm going to prepare you guys for the, um, you know, for a chance to try this out. So, We've just spent some time on these five different powers, you know, empathy, feeling connected, using words and actions to increase our connection with another person or other people. Um, exploration, feeling curious and saying, doing things from a sense of wonder rather than a sense of judgment. Innovation, feeding the group's creativity, building off what each person is proposing. Navigation, getting to the point where we feel centered, where we we know what are the most important things, and bringing potential statements and actions back to what is important, and focused action, preparing ourselves to be in flow, preparing ourselves to work through seen and unseen and unseen obstacles, whether those obstacles are external or those obstacles are our own mind trying to sabotage our efforts. So, um, what I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pair you guys up in groups of let's say two or three. Um, so one person can try this with another person and I'd like to model this. So I'd like a volunteer to go through this where we're having a person model one of these powers and relate it to a challenge they themselves are having. So, um, is there a volunteer? Mitch, can you explain yes. that a little bit, you know, yeah. in more detail, what you're, what you're looking for I and expect, you know? 
So would you be the volunteer that I can ask these questions with? Because I think people and you will see it better as we go through it. Would you? Yes. Mind? Okay. Yeah, sure. Of course. Okay. So what's a challenge that you currently have? <laughs> in like what? Oh, in okay. Anywhere, I'm an anywhere. open so, book. And, right. You know, right. Some what challenge, area? Right. Some um, challenge that you don't mean mind sharing to... with the rest of us. Also. No, not at all. No, all no. Right. I'm just saying in, in, if you can be more specific, like, are we talking about a challenge specifically with a person that I'm trying to overcome a conversation? Just if you could just That'd be fine. me that would about, be fine. or a challenge that I'm, you know, currently, I don't know. Um, it, if you could just be more specific. I well, can it could be a challenge on. involving another person. It could be a challenge in a hobby that you have where you're trying to do something and you're, and you're um, kind of half giving up it, it. You know, you feel like you can't do it um any maybe i'm maybe i'm not the right first person for this one because it um let, let me think what a challenge that okay i, I got one for, uh, okay I, yeah, yeah. Sure, Melanie. <laughs> okay great so i have a, a co-worker um who used to teach at this uh, in the school district she mm -hmm. left two years ago and then they brought her back temporarily mm -hmm. um so we I've, I've asked my team to follow the long range plans and uh, she's uh, doing her own thing um okay. and and per perfect so problem per yeah. perfect perfect example and as you think about that problem which of these five powers do you want to use um i think for me it's uh i think the empathy was the first one okay uh, because i know there was some controversial controversy in her leaving i don't know what it mm -hmm. was and so i think that that might have some lingering effects of what what's happening with the decisions that she's making now mm -hmm. good and then and then followed closely by exploration just okay. to kind of yeah figure out. they go together right yeah yeah okay so and you've felt empathy in the past right Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. With other people. How do you feel? But You don't have to actually tell us, but can you get yourself so that you have that feeling of empathy in you right now? Yeah. 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 Okay. I, it, yeah. So when you have that feeling of empathy, what occurs to you about this challenge? Like right away, I, I almost feel sorry for her. Oh, okay. Because she, you know, I what I get from her is that some something's happened two mm -hmm. years ago that was unresolved. Mm -hmm. And I feel that there's a little bit of sorrow that she has and maybe a little bit of regret. Uh -huh. And so as a team lead, I, I want to help address that. So, mm -hmm. and so that she can come, like she can actually approach the job and kind of catch up to what the team is actually doing. I think she's stuck in, mm -hmm in her own head of what, what had happened in the past that I'm not unaware of. And what I, what I really like about that is that that's really the first step is to kind of start getting in that person's head with empathy. And what occurs to me is that having now a little bit gotten into that person's head, you could come up with a couple things that you could do to draw her out. Right. Mm, yeah. And how do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think that would mean uh, spending a little bit of time with her, uh, maybe at lunchtime or at the morning or checking, checking in, mm -hmm. I think, you know, having making that connection with her that I actually care about her. Mm -hmm. And, and I really want, like, I want her expertise, um, just just to be able to redirect it, right, to kind of yep. give her a sense of purpose to find out yep what her expertise is in and then how my team can benefit from her so that she does feel valued and, and useful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do you feel about this situation now? Has anything changed? Well, interestingly, I, I, today I had a little conversation with her, just, mm -hmm. just a, almost a, an exploration conversation. Oh, well, okay. And um, so I, I find that she, from last week to this week, she is, uh, last week was a little yes, no questions, you know, mm -hmm. like, like less yes, no answers. Mm -hmm. And I find this week she's a little bit more open and, and explaining a little bit more. So trying to draw her out, just making her feel comfortable with the conversation yep. that we have. And especially that, you know, the conversation and whatever she tells me that it's going to stay with me and it's not going to, you know, be spread around the school or be taken to admin. And I think that's a really important part because people are afraid that if you go to admin then all of a sudden yep. you get hauled in and then you know they cause problems for other people 
Uh, so there's so much to unpack to unpack in this conversation. This was great, Melanie. Thank you, because this is a, a perfect, a perfect example. And one of the things to unpack is that you know I've just yeah you know, talked about these five powers, but as Melanie's demonstrated, we've used every single one of these powers before. What this has done, hopefully, is give us names to what we're doing so that we can use them more often. And we can recall, like, this is a situation, I'm going to be innovation right now. I'm going to pull out. And I've been that, and, and, you've, and you've been innovative before. You've been innovation before. You've been navigation before. So, so one, that was one of the things I, that uh, you know, I wanted to bring out from this conversation. Uh, another thing is that by, um, by, taking in one of these powers you're changing your your whole mindset so that you are resourceful and resilient and your brain can't help but start coming up with other things that you can do in order to move the situation forward and then a third thing to unpack with this is that normally this type of conversation that melanie and i just had we'd be doing this over you know 15 minutes a half an hour we wouldn't be doing this over 3 minutes but just doing it in in in, in a couple of minutes you can see that there that there is a change um in the way um in the way we think about problems and if we could do this over 10 or 20 minutes um i'm sure that we could come up with you know for any of these problems um that people face a, a, you know a different attitude a different degree of resourcefulness and resilience um, and I was hoping to do to break you into groups so that you could do this on your own, but I'm looking at the time. Um, so so everybody at least has the slides. And so you can try doing this type of conversation with another person. Kim, since you asked the question before, having me do that with Melanie, did that become clearer what I what I was thinking? Or does can I just say, yeah. as you're, you know, like, I think what's really important is that the questions that you asked me were, were getting me to think about things that maybe I didn't think of myself. And that's what I appreciated. Cause sometimes you, when you're so caught up in something, you don't see the forest for the trees yeah. and you've got these blinders on and you need so somebody to point out different perspectives or ask some questions mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. inquiry questions to say oh yeah you know what now this is the direction i'm going to take this is the empathy i need to have this is the you know innovation i need to take and these are the actions that i need to 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 do so yeah it, it, it was very helpful to me thank that, you and that and what, what you, the point that you just made was something that i should have made but didn't and i'm so glad that you brought it up because um it's it you know it's easier to recognize these things in others and it's easier to ask these questions for another person and so you can use these to help other people maybe you can get to the point where you can ask these of yourself also um, but having these questions handy so that you can help other people do this it, um you you'll be a tremendous help to them um great idea great thoughts melanie thank you so i i do want to say that um, Wait, can what, you guys hear yeah, me now? Yes, now I can hear oh, you. Oh, yes. okay, okay, finally. Yes, so sorry. Thank you, um, Teresa, for letting me know that I was trying to talk. And I, oh. I <laughs> yeah. Um, so Mitch, you had asked me if that had struck a, struck a chord with me. And yes, mm -hmm. it did. And that pertained perfectly to that situation. And I was um, asking a question about um you know innovation and navigation so mm -hmm. um or actually it's more about exploration because i am often this this is a personal thing i'm often accused like growing up my middle name was quiz or mm -hmm. like my nickname was quiz mm -hmm. so i'm always in that explore exploration mode to get to that empathy level mm -hmm. right mitch you talked that's about that's a superpower that's great Okay, thank you. But it really I, is. Oh, yay. Thank <laughs> you. But what I was saying is you were talking earlier about empathy and having like the backstory mm -hmm. or the uh, or the story. You know, you have to have that backstory in order to create that empathetic connection. And then, of course, that backstory has to come from exploration. Right. Right. We can't have that. We can't have that deep emotional connection until we have that exploration and we really fully understand where that person is rooted 
where their beliefs and their 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 story is rooted from and then so that's like the exploration or the navigation part and then we can have that empathetic and that backstory um having been accused you know of being curious to a fault it's almost Mm -hmm. like is it sketchy why is she asking so many questions why does she want to know like how do you so my question is how do you overcome that because basically I want to explore so I can have a better connection so I can have a deeper empathy so I you know I I want to know what would be wrong with saying that what you just explained to me if I was another person it would be like wow okay I, I see that Yes. And then I feel like I'm on the defensive sometimes, like I'm put like I'm put on the defensive and I don't want to be in that position. So maybe I'm approaching it the wrong way when I become curious, maybe well, I'm say, curious to a fault. Maybe I'm too invasive. No, I'm not I don't, sure. I, I personally, I don't think that you're too invasive. I think that that you're it, so um, kind of leads into your your saboteurs are your or your part X, which is what we go into in the first course is sabotaging your efforts to go into ex- explore mode. Mm. And that's what's happening inside your brain. And we go into the saboteurs and the part X in, in the full course, but it's your brain that's your that's being your enemy right now and convincing you that these people are thinking bad of you because that's its job is to make, you know, your part X and your saboteurs, their job is to make you feel miserable and, and they're succeeding. Well, actually, and if it's okay with everyone, yeah. um, actually, it's not about me feeling that way. It's about actually people saying it to me like, God, you're like so sketchy. You keep asking so many questions. Oh. It's it's not, it's not like no one can ever actually make me feel a certain way. That's a whole nother story. Okay. So great. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's a whole nother story. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a whole nother story. It's actually mm-hmm. people being like, you know, okay, enough, enough with the questions. So my question is, when is enough being too invasive? But if I haven't felt that level of connection where I can go into that empathy part, which is what you really want to have that connection with anybody, Mm -hmm. whether you're selling something, whether you're just, you know, trying to even connect with a stranger, you want to have that empathy part, but you can't do that unless you know something, Right. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's where there's a gray area of, yes, I want to explore and I want to navigate um, because I want to get to that empathetic level so I can reach that high level of connection. That's, that's the gray area that, that I struggle with as a coach, you know, Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that I think you're, you're striking a chord with, and I appreciate that. Um, Yeah. So I would, you know, I can't, I don't have a, an exact answer. I'll tell you if some when somebody says things like that to me, when I'm in resil- resourceful mind, yeah, I'll, I'll go internal. I'll go and say, you know something in this situation, what's really important to me? And then that grounds me, and then I'll just know what to do. Yeah, thank you. That's a perfect answer. I appreciate okay. that. And thank you for the time, yeah. everyone. I know we're over time. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Mitch. So just you know, for those for you know, this uh QR code is for the September 10th class. I'm teaching the class on a new platform. So I'm trying to keep the class small. Um, So I'm trying to keep it to five to 10 people. So, but I would love if some of the people here tonight, um, you know, signed up for the class and this, uh, this QR code is good for uh, $50 off on the class. The QR code is good until August 30th. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Mitch and I, oh, I was just going to Go say, ahead. how oh. long is the QR code for? Like, is it in the email? Are you going to, well, you know, uh, um, allow allow us or people to access the QR code? Maybe even share it with others. Oh, you can share it with others. Um, oh, okay. So, it, so it's on. So everybody should have a copy of the slides because I emailed a copy, oh, yeah, yeah, a copy yeah, of the slides. Yes. So yes, you have yes, it there. You. Um, I can send an email out tomorrow morning. Um, with the actual link if you want also okay Maybe yeah I'll yes please okay. I, yeah. i'll do, Me, I'll do that i personally as well. appreciate that okay sure Mitch, are you also offering this in uh, next year? Because I know, like I, uh, you know, for for my team, uh, which I'd like them to be involved, mm-hmm. we um, a couple of us are coaching, and so um, we'll be not available in the evenings. Is there an, another time that you offer this this session? So, um, well, you have my email. You can, you know, if you have some suggestions or you have a group of people, I can do it at a different time. Okay. Um, I've been doing it at 
um, seven to nine uh, because those are the times for the educators in Washington and they were my first big group. So I generally teach um, a class in September, a class in October, a class in January, February, March, and April. Oh, okay. But, but it depends, you know, like sometimes it's mastering your resourceful brain. Sometimes it's, it's um, mind shifting too. Sometimes it's conflict to collaboration. Um, you know, uh, right now I have scheduled this for September 10th and on October 22nd, I think the, um, uh, flexible mindsets for ultimate success, which is mind shifting too, is when I'm teaching that. So, so those, those two are scheduled, but I, okay. but if you, if you have a group of four or five people and you want me to teach it at a different time, I'll set up and teach it at a different time. Perfect. I have a team of, I went from a team of three last year to a team of nine this year. So wow. New, I have uh, six brand new teachers, so. Oh, that's exciting then, right? Yeah, I, I'd yeah. love for, for mm -hmm. us to access your expertise, so thanks for that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other thoughts, questions? I, we're, we're, I mean, uh... yeah. <laughs> Rashid, it's so great to see you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 it was amazing. It was amazing. Thanks for your time. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, it's changed a lot in seven years, right? <laughs> you've been well, doing this for coming. seven years mitch uh so but the very first class i taught was to university students in niger seven years ago oh i think and, i kind of remember and this. rashid was there and yeah. uh, Musa was there they were, oh, they nice. were you know they were they were kids now then they're adults they're you know like they're, i was 19 <laughs> <laughs> nice wow very nice Right now, uh, I, now I now I learn from them. Yes, isn't <laughs> yeah. that funny how that goes? Yeah, interesting. Um, and and we can talk talk more offline because I'm really new to your particular course, Mitch. Basically, okay. last week I checked in, mm -hmm. but um, really, really interesting stuff. And um, who is it geared toward mostly? So, and again, the, we could talk offline. Right. Yeah. So most um, most of the examples are taking from teaching. Yes, but I'll say half the examples. Or are taking geared, from teaching. is it geared toward teachers? And... Well, so more more teachers take it. Like probably yep. 75, 80 percent of the people who take it are teachers or paras or administrators. Yep. But um, a lot of it is just personal life and yes, um, sure is. Management it's really great or stuff. Influence. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really great stuff. Good, good. Thank you so much. Well, I don't want to take anyone for, else's thanks time. Thanks for Thanks for Of course, for yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Mitch. See okay. you at the studio. Yeah, see you at the studio. See you at the studio. Thanks Bye, everybody. everyone. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thanks again, Mitch. You too, Kim. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> see you. See you. Okay. Well, good night. <laughs>